Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your washing machine doesn't stop filling. Stick around till the end of the video for an important washer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. The first thing we need to check is the water pressure. All washers require a certain amount of pressure to work properly. If the washer isn't supplied with enough water pressure, the water inlet valve may not close completely. That could cause the washer tub to overfill. Before you check the water pressure, make sure the inlet valve and hose filter screens are clean. Since not all manufacturers are the same, you'll need to check the washer's user manual to see how much pressure it needs to work. If you don't have a way to test the pressure yourself, but you still think it's low, you may have to have a plumber come to test it for you. Next thing to check is the water inlet valve. It controls the hot and cold water that enters the tub. Water inlet valves have solenoids that open and close to let water flow into the washer. If your washer doesn't stop filling, it could be that the valve is sticking open. This could be caused by a jam plunger or a clog in the valve. To test it, when the washer is in a fill cycle, unplug it to see if the valve closes. If it doesn't close, you know it's stuck open and needs to be replaced. Newer washers that have control boards might give you an error code related to the water inlet valve. If that's the case, you'll have to get the tech sheet and follow the troubleshooting guide. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Now we need to look at the water level switch. It controls the amount of water going into the washer. The water level switch is a pressure switch that turns the water off when it gets to the correct level and then sends power to the motor to start the wash cycle. Inside the switch are two sets of contacts, one that sends power to the inlet valve until the washer is full, and another that sends power to the motor after the tub is full. On top loaders, it's usually mounted on the control panel behind the water level selector knob, and on front loaders, it's usually mounted on the upper cabinet frame. If the washer doesn't stop filling, the contacts that send power to the water inlet valve have likely fused together. On front loaders, if your washer doesn't stop filling, you may get an error code indicating an overflow condition in that case, you'll have to get the tech sheet, find your error code, and follow the troubleshooting steps to test the water level switch. For top loaders, we're going to test the switch to make sure it stops sending power to the water inlet valve once the tub gets to the correct level. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. You'll need to consult your wiring diagram to see which wires to test. In our case, the violet is power, the pink goes to the inlet valve, and the tan sends power to the motor. In order to test the switch, we need to take it off the machine. So first remove the water level selector knob, then open up the console, and remove the pressure hose from the switch. Now you can take the switch off and remove the wiring harness. Attach a multimeter probe to both the power and the water in the valve terminals. You should have continuity. Then gently blow into the hose fitting on the switch. You should hear the diaphragm inside move to the tub full position. At that point, the meter should lose continuity. If it doesn't, that means the contacts inside the water level switch have fused together and you'll have to replace it. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next, we're going to look at the water level switch pressure hose. It uses air pressure to tell the washer when the tub is full. It's a length of hose that connects the outer tub to the pressure switch. As the tub fills, more air pressure is created. Once the tub is at the correct level, the power to the water in the valve is shut off. It's located between the air dome on the outer tub and is routed up to the water level switch. If your washer won't stop filling, it could be that the hose has either fallen off, is clogged, or has a hole in it that's reducing the pressure preventing the water level switch from shutting off the valve. Check both ends of the hose to make sure it's still attached securely. If it is, then you should inspect it for any holes, kinks, or clogs. Also inspect the air dome to make sure it's not clogged. If it's clogged, you'll have to clean it out. 
but if it's damaged, you'll have to replace it. Last thing to look at is the main control board. It controls the functions of the washer after you make your selections. The main control board receives input from the user interface control board and collects information from sensors, switches, and other controls. It times and initiates the cycles and monitors the functions of the washer. If your washer won't stop filling, it could be that the board has failed. Depending upon your model, the control board may be mounted on the control panel itself or under the washer top. If the main control board has failed, it may not be communicating with the water inlet valve or the water level switch. In order to test it, you'll have to get your tech sheet and follow the troubleshooting steps to determine if you need to replace the board. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Washing machine fill hose inspection is often overlooked by most people. If your fill hose burst, it can cause severe water damage to your home. A fill hose can flood your home with up to 500 gallons of water per hour, so it's important to inspect them regularly. Make sure to check the entire hose for any signs of bulging or leaking. Also make sure the fittings aren't corroded. Then shut off the water and look at the washers and screens inside. If they're clogged, you can just clean them out, but if they're rusted or damaged, you'll need to replace them. When you reinstall them or put new ones on, make sure the hose fittings on each end are tight so you don't get any leaks. There are many different types of hoses. The most common ones are rubber or braided stainless steel. Rubber is the most common type of hose, but if you want extra burst protection because of where the washer is installed, it's recommended that you upgrade to the stainless steel type. Some of the newer systems even have an auto shut off feature that shuts the water off if a leak or change in pressure is detected. Regardless of the hose type or the warranty it has, it's important to check them at least one to two times a year because they can fail at any time. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.